Well, let's get you more perspective now on holiday commercials and corporate America during a pandemic. I'm joined live via Skype by Chloe Demrovsky, president and CEO of the Disaster Recovery Institute International. She specifically works with companies to craft business continuity plans that include correct messaging during crises like the pandemic. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So we have seen it as a bit of a balancing act. So how are companies balancing that messaging during a time of togetherness when you have health experts really telling us that it's unsafe to have gatherings with relatives coming from different places? It's a balancing act. The, the message that we have to come together by staying apart really remains a good one because it acknowledges that need to be together, to feel a part of something, to feel connected while recognizing the situation that we're currently in. The challenge is to reach those people who are desperate for a little holiday cheer, and a lot of us are very desperate for some holiday cheer, cheer while trying not to be tone deaf. I mean, so many people have been affected by this, um, this pandemic, both in terms of the human toll and also the Im economic impact, and that's going to linger. So people are very uncertain, and marketers have to really respect that and be sensitive, approach it with empath empathy, and tailor their messaging to the moment. And that tailoring really is an odd. So in terms of the companies that have really fought outside of the box most successfully when it comes to balancing health and profits, who stands out to you? There have been a few. I mean, we're, we're seeing obviously a great amount of um, impact on lots of companies across, especially hospitality, the restaurant industry, those kinds of um, industries that are most heavily affected. But we see that they can uh, bounce back from it. We just saw major IPO successes from DoorDash and Airbnb, for example. Um, we've seen them pivot their, their business strategy and then use that as the basis for their, their marketing, for example. The city of Las Vegas is actually a really interesting example because you know their entire business model as a city and all of the businesses that they represent there um, are deeply affected by this pandemic. So they've been sort of saying a, a tagline that I find kind of cute, which is let your hair down, keep your mask up, for example. So again, you can kind of be cheeky and understand your um, identity, but also recognizing the pandemic. And a really great way to do that is maybe not going with national TV ads, but really looking online for targeted ads so you're really tailoring the message to the audience that you're reaching. That can be a really effective strategy. It's not just the big guys, though, who are really kind of pivoting and doing cool things. Local businesses can really have um, an edge here where they can really be very human on social media, for example, by you know welcoming people into their store virtually through kinds of video events, for example, and really showcasing their personality. And we've seen all kinds of examples of this across the country from, you know, the Cheese Brothers in Wisconsin who moved their business entirely online and really embraced a whole new reality for themselves um, to, you know, independent restaurants like the Rieger in Kansas City that turned itself into a community kitchen at the start of this pandemic. Um, so really showcasing that you're of your community and that you're for them is key to um, honing a message that is really appropriate for the times. And we do have to remember, obviously, people still working at these companies trying to put out these products and these services for people. So what about the staff at these companies? What should employees be doing to show them that they really value them, especially during this time? That's particularly of, of import. You have to have your message of safety extend to all of your st stakeholders. You can't tell your customers that you care about their safety while jeopardizing that of your staff. I mean, that kind of double standard just doesn't play well. It's not transparent, um, and it's not really going to make get your company a good repu reputation in the long run it's also just not the right thing to do so making sure that you're uh, that the safety of all stakeholders is paramount is really really key um, to making sure that you hit the right tone during this message and also you know we've learned a lot we've changed a lot about how things operate during this time especially in hospitality retail these kinds of industries the hotel sector um, have had to completely shift um, or in some in a lot of cases close down. Right. We right. know that we're going to need those industries moving forward and they're going to come back and there's going to be a bounce back and a lot of reinvestment. But I think they should be taking this time and leaders should be thinking like, how did we treat our employees before? How did we treat our customers before? What was our business model before and what didn't work about it? Do we really want to go back to exactly the way things were? Or do we want to embrace a new future for hospitality, um, learning the lessons that we learned from the pandemic and shaping a brighter future that is inclusive of all of our stakeholders and not just our customers? 
Now, just quickly, because obviously not everyone can take the vaccine, depending on their existing health uh, conditions, like being uh, prone to severe allergic reactions. And not everybody actually even wants to take the vaccine, even if they are healthy enough to. But if vaccine distribution is effective and rates do reduce, how do you expect corporate America to respond? I think they're going to have to be key, uh, be careful not to think that everything is going to bounce back immediately. People are still going to have lingering fears for their safety for a long time. I think people will start to, uh, you know, travel locally and go to restaurants locally, feel more comfortable and confident gathering within their local community before they're willing to take, you know, that that uh, vacation to that far-flung exotic locale. Once they feel comfortable locally, maybe then they'll start to think about taking a trip. And once people uh, you know, have gotten that collective sense that, okay, things are back to normal, the good news here is that we can expect a kind of vibrant fiesta-like atmosphere where people are just so excited to get together again, to convene, to be in person. So, you know, there is some relief on the way for, for these kinds of businesses that have been really struggling, but it's not going to come in this holiday season. We've got to get through a little bit longer um, to, to be able to hold out for, for that time when we can really truly all convene together again. Because video conferencing, as we all know, is just not the same. This is true. Well, thank you so much. Chloe Dimrovsky there, President and CEO of the Disaster Recovery Institute International.